25% of FPL managers have hit that button now wildcarding this game week. I might be one of them. If you want Haaland, Salah, Trent, you might just need to reshuffle that pack. So welcome to the Gianni Batici YouTube show. We're going to look at my wildcard team for game week four. If you want to show support for the channel, do hit that like button nice and early. And please do consider subscribing to the channel as well. So without further ado, let's have a look at a team that I've put together for a game week four wildcard. We're going to go through position by position and we're going to start with the goalkeepers. Now, Verbruggen has been identified uh, as the number one by Herzler at Brighton. And what we've seen from Brighton in game weeks one to three so far is they're probably going to be very good at the back. They're going to keep clean sheets. And the next two fixtures for Brighton are really good. We're going to get clean sheets. Now, from game week six, Flecken's fixtures become really good. And I think we can go with two 4.5 rotating goalkeepers. What we've seen so far this season, for those that went for a 4.5 set and forget, they've underwhelmed. And actually, if you've gone for a 5.5, you've probably been rewarded. Well, two 4.5s might just be the answer. So look, before we look at the defenders, midfielders and forwards, uh, let me introduce you to a couple of polls that I put out on Twitter. Are you wildcarding ahead of game week four? Well, around 15% had already wildcarded. 25%, this is from over 8,000 um, views at 1,800 votes. 25% are wildcarding game week four, and then around 60% are looking to hold that wildcard a little bit longer. But from that 60%, trust me, some will get twitchy fingers. Um, in terms of Mo Salah, I think he is the trigger for many as to why we need to wildcard or so many will want to wildcard because so many can't get to Salah in one move or two moves. And if that's the case, maybe it's hit that, bud hit that button. So 80% or 75%-ish say Salah will be in their game week 40, which is remarkable, really. Um, and I think game week five captaincy plays a big part of that. Remember, in game week five, Haaland plays Arsenal. Mm. Well, Salah's got home fixture versus Bournemouth. Um, in terms of ownership, this is from Fantasy Football Scout. In the last 24 hours, we can see the sorts of players that are popular and gaining momentum. And in my wildcard team, spoiler alert, you're going to see a few of these players, João Pedro, Salah, Diaz, Jackson, Eze. Players being sold, surprisingly, the Arsenal lads, Raya, Havert, Saka, as well as Gordon and Ake. Um, interesting there. Arsenal have two really tough fixtures, but maybe ones they can produce the goods in because it's Arsenal, they're fixture-proof. It's Spurs, it's Man City, and then game week six, Arsenal have a really good run as well. This is all from the Scout members area. If you can check Scout out, there's a link in the description. Um, guys, thank you so much, by the way, for supporting the channel just by watching. If you want to watch further and want to show support, the like button and the subscribe button are my best friend. Um, let's see my defenders then, shall we? So look, we're going to move through the team. I can't afford three optimal Liverpool players. I can afford two of them. So... Spoiler alert, Mo Salah's in this team. Trent, we can see, is in this team. I would love to accompany Trent with a Robertson. At 6 million, I think he's good value. But money's always our enemy in FPL. And Canate at 5 million still offers a cheap route to that defence. So for the time being, Canate is in. Now, I'm not saying this is a long-term hold, but short-term, Liverpool are the only team that have kept three clean sheets. They've got all the best defensive data in terms of the expected data, the shots conceded. Under slot, Liverpool are going to be a beast defensively. Double Liverpool defence might be the play. Now, sure, Jota is attractive and Luis Diaz is attractive. But when that Champions League kicks in, which is very, very soon, the midfielders are going to see, and the forwards are going to see rotation. Gakpo will get games. Darwin will get games. There'll be a lot of early subs. The back four probably isn't going to move too much. So Canate and Trent are in there. And then Robinson has been one of the best budget or mid price defenders of the season so far. The best 4.5, in my opinion, probably has been Rico Lewis and Robinson. Now, Rico Lewis doesn't feature in this team because, again, I'm worried slightly of... Pep Roulette when the Champions League kicks in. But Konza could very easily be Rico Lewis. And actually, I've been uh, shuffling between the two of them. But Konza is there because he's got a very good run of games and he's cheap. And if you're just looking for a six-point machine, Konza offers that and hope of that in the next five fixtures. Rico Lewis offers higher ceiling than that, but minutes will be a concern. Maybe it's worth the gamble there. Uh, and then there's a 4.0, Mosquera. I've gone with Mosquera. I, I just think Wolves will have a better season than Leicester and Southampton and Ipswich. And there's four million options at those clubs. But if we're looking long term on wildcard, Mosquera might just be the pick. Remember, they're playing with a back five Wolves and he's one of them. So that's the defensive line. Meh. It gets really interesting when we start talking midfielders and forwards. And when we see this next lineup, that's when you look at the team and go, 
do I need to consider a wild card? By the way, guys, my mini league code is M7UEO5. I'm saying it out loud and it's on screen because there's so many that listen to this on podcast. And if you are into your podcasts, not many know this because I don't really advertise it. Every YouTube show is available in pod format. So you can just search my name on Spotify or iTunes and you can subscribe and follow um, pretty much a daily show 10, 15 minute pods um, instead of watching on YouTube, if, you, if that's your thing. Um, we'll see the midfielders in a sec. Before we see the midfielders, though, I want to introduce you to a game called Sleeper that I have been playing uh, in a Pick'em League where you just predict the outcome of the 10 Premier League games of the weekend. Home win, away win, draw. If you want to join my league, I'm giving away weekly prizes. Game week one, I gave away a PlayStation 5. Game week two, I gave away a £100 Amazon voucher. Game week three, a £100 Amazon voucher. Every week, it'll be a minimum of £100 and a maximum of a PS5 with season-long prizes at MacBook level as well. There's no catch. It's free. It's fun. There's no crypto. There's no gambling. Um, They're not trying to sell you anything. If you click the link below, uh, you will go straight into my uh, Pick'em League. You can start making your picks and, yeah, win big prizes. Um, let's see my team then, shall we? So, uh, shout out to Sleeper, by the way. Thank you for giving me £8,000 worth of prizes. Um, that's pretty cool to give out through the season. Um, midfielders. Let's talk about a couple that are, I think, the glue guys. And they are players that don't play for the big, big teams. They are Eze and they are Umbermo. And they're both around that £7 million price bracket. Eze's had a drop and Umbermo's had a rise. Now, Eze has very good fixtures coming up. He's got Leicester at home and then Man United at home. I think they're two good home games for Eze. Whilst Umbermo is two very tricky games, but then goes on an unbelievable run from game week six. Both are players I want in my team, I think, long term. Both are talisman for their teams. Both are on penalties. Eze is playing almost as a number 10, and Burmo is playing wide right, but very central and very close to Visser, and is the main goal threat without Tony. Without Tony in the team, Visser's, um, and Burmo's numbers are insane. So he's a must-have if you're wildcarding in six, therefore if you're wildcarding in four, I think you just get him early. You could even afford to bench him through those tricky fixtures, because Man City and Tottenham are two tough games, although I think against Spurs, Brentford score. And then Eze, we saw like game week one and two, so unlucky. Owners have been unlucky and well done if you kept the faith. Around still in around sort of 25%-ish of teams. We saw in the Carabao Cup last week he performed, goal and assist, and then against Chelsea, straightaway goal with three bonus points. Both are very, very good picks in their own right. And I just get them in early if I was wildcarding. Mo Salah, I don't think we need to discuss Salah. Like, I guess the discussion here is the teams that went Haaland and Salah at the start of the season, which was probably only about 20% of teams, they've won out. Clearly, that was the play. Pick the two best players in the game. Pick the two best players that have had summers off. And they've both smashed it early doors. Huge, huge points so far for both Salah and Haaland. Many went just Haaland. Some went just Salah. If you went just Salah, getting Haaland in is going to be tricky. You're going to need to probably wildcard to do it. If you went just Haaland, you might be able to reach Salah by selling your Sackers or your Sons in one or two free transfers. Um Sangare is just 4.5 fodder here. You're going to need a 4.5 midfielder, very likely. And then at 5 million, look, at 5.5, there's some very good options at 5.5. You can buy Minter, uh, you can buy Smithrow, 5.6, I think he is. But at 5 million, you get Rogers at 5.1, who hasn't produced the goods yet, but Villa have good fixtures. Or you could go with Dharma at 5 million. What's really interesting about Dharma Traore, guys, is he's now starting games. And actually, he's not always coming off early too. I think he had 90 minutes in game week three. He scored the goal. It was 1-0 against Ipswich. And Marco Silva went, no, I need you on the pitch at all times. He's becoming more and more valuable to this Fulham team, who again are in a good fixture run. He's 5 million. We know he can be dangerous. The big question over Dharma is his final ball is not good doesn't have to be at 5 million. If he scores every five games or every six games, you're probably okay. A lot of the time, he's going to be on the bench um, or he's going to be the seventh attacker and the reliability on him is low. I guess Sangare is the eighth attacker in this lineup. One to consider, Adama, if you don't want to spend the five and a half on, say, a Minto or a little bit more on a Smith Rowe. Rogers is also worth consideration. But the reason I've not gone Rogers in this team is I have Ollie Watkins and I don't know if I'm ready for the double Villa attack yet. But... Ollie Watkins is being slept on. Ollie Watkins has dropped in price. Ollie Watkins isn't performing as he should be. 
and he is getting some early subs. We've seen him coming off at the hour mark. We've seen him coming off at 75 minutes. But margins are so, so fine in FPL. And you've watched the games. You saw the Arsenal game. You saw the Arsenal game in game week two. We missed a couple of big chances. You saw the Leicester game where we missed big chances. He converts one or two of those. And all of a sudden, we're looking at an Ollie Watkins that's 40 to 50% owned again. He's slumped down to 27% owned. He was around 50% at the start of the season. Watkins on his day is this elite FPL asset. He outperformed Haaland last year. He plays for a very good, well-functioning team, and he's still first choice. Yes, John Duran's been coming off the bench, scoring goals and doing well. Make no doubt about it. Ollie Watkins has got credit in his bank. He's still one of the first names, I think, on the team sheet for Aston Villa. He is in a really good run of fixtures. So whilst, yes, he should have achieved points against Arsenal and Leicester, let's look forward and go, Everton and Wolves at home? Ipswich away? United at home? Name the worst defences in the Premier League so far. Everton are conceding goals for fun. So have Wolves, so have Ipswich, so have Man United. They are four of the best fixtures you could ask for. This is just purely a fixtures play. Yes, it's a lot of money. I still think you can go there. Now, the compromise, if you go Ollie Watkins, is you can't probably accommodate a Cole Palmer. You can't get a, an, a, a I don't know, a mid-priced midfielder instead of a Dharma Traore. But I think Watkins is worth the gamble. And if I was on wildcard, and maybe I will be on wildcard, I'll be going Watkins in. Remember, I took a four-point hit for Watkins in game week three. I've gone all in on Ollie Watkins and I've got Rodgers too. I need Villa to produce the goods. Haaland doesn't need discussion. He's in the team. He's the best captaincy option most weeks. And then João Pedro, we are gifted in FPL this season. João Pedro is going to have another rise during the FPL break. I'm sure he will. Of course he will. Like, João Pedro is way underpriced this year. And we were worried about his minutes because of the signings at Brighton. I don't think we need to be worried about his minutes. When Welbeck comes off up top... Jao Pedro doesn't come off. Well, Jao Pedro just goes into the number nine and there's a number 10 substitution. He can play nine, he can play 10, he can even play left when Matoma's not on the pitch. He's getting 90 minutes and he's also scoring goals. Like he scored against Arsenal. He scored against Man United. Well, now he's got two very, very good home games against Ipswich and Nottingham Forest. Yes, please. Like Jao Pedro, and by the way, he's not been called up to the Brazil squad. So during this international break, you haven't got to worry too much about, oh, will he be coming back late? Because Brazil play on the Wednesday and I think Brighton the Saturday. So that's where we're at with João Pedro. I think a very, very good option. This is a, a team you'll probably be able to make with your team value. The big compromise is there's no Chelsea. Uh, there's another compromise that there's no Arsenal. Remember, Arsenal do not play good fixtures until game week six now. They've got a couple of tricky ones. It's Spurs, although I still see goals and Saka's still a good own for that. And then it's Man City. Are you going to need Arsenal in game week six? Yes. Will you have transfers to get there? Hopefully. And you should be trying to hold a couple so you can reach Arsenal players. The big compromise with a game week four wildcard, though, is you're not jumping on Arsenal and Brentford, who are about to have great fixture runs in six. That's why getting an Abermo in now, I think, is key. Maybe a Flecken in now is key. And I've done that with two players in this team. Do I like a four wildcard? Yeah. Do I love it? No. But needs must sometimes. I've already taken a four-point hit this week, and I might convert that four-point hit into wildcard if I have more fires to put out. Let's see. I'll let you guys know in the second week of the international break what I decide to do. Uh, but as things stand, it's firmly something I'm considering. Remember, 25% of teams are on wildcard. Um, guys, a final reminder about Sleeper. Do check it out. The link in the description it's a wicked app. It takes seconds to sign up. And I'm genuinely giving away £8,000 worth of gifts to you lot this year. Weekly prizes, season long prizes. Even in my uh, mini league for my channel members, we're doing monthly prizes. Gucci in Australia just won a £100 voucher. Uh, there's no catches. There really isn't. Uh, so link below in the description. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Do hit those buttons on the way out. Like and also subscribe uh, to the channel. And I'll see you in a couple of days for another video. Bye bye.